I need to get something out of the way. I am terrible at Valorant. I am used to console shooters, but I'm also very bad at being patient, meaning that Valorant is basically out of my league. <laughs> I guess that does beg the question as to what makes someone want to do a video about a game they're terrible at. Did you really click that title and think I was gonna get you to Radiant? I'm like an old boomer still clutching to his master's level Sombra play from five years ago. And I don't think you know what it feels like to be terrible at Valorant. Every breath I'm a target, every turn I'm cut down. But I'm one stubborn motherfucker. Despite that, I still play Valorant because I fundamentally believe it is a good game. That and more importantly, it lets me play with my friends. You know, the white guy buddies that go all the way back to high school. I believe the scientific community refers to it as a podcast of white guys. Well, I also could figure out what the hell fantasy football is, but I'm not learning two new languages today. This is more so my experience, because if you didn't think this game was full of narcissists, think again. You want jerk advice? Google all the special angles that let you bounce off grenades and arrows into the enemy spawn. I think this might also serve as an explanation as to what this game is for someone who just keeps hearing about Valorant but has more self-preservation instinct than I do. Each match of Valorant is set into two sides, attack and defense. The attacking team has to run onto one of three points, clear it out, then plant something called the spike which detonates after 45 seconds. Well, they clear it out, then some dumbass has to run back to spawn because despite the game literally dropping it right in front of you, someone always leaves it in the car like it's a case of cold ones on beach day. The defending team is the inverse of that. They get a good 30 seconds to pick a position and lay some traps, then hold that objective or defuse a beach ball if it gets planted. It really is like a lot of games, but also not in so many ways. It's got the skin of a peppy gun video game, but let it be known, Valorant does not fuck around in its gunplay. At all. This is not a shooter where you dance around and impress your opponents with your personality. The guns kill you almost instantly, and if you move while shooting, you might as well not be bothering. That was a real pain in the ass for me to learn. In most games, when I see the bad guy, I want to make my movement erratic and scheme up a way to take them down, which more often than not has led to me whistling through a hole in my head in Valorant and spending the rest of the rounds watching other people play the game properly. And that always comes in the form of me getting domed by the one character who can move while shooting, followed by my assailant gleefully cheering, Your, Your fault. fault! Yes, I will give Riot this, they seem more ingrained in the culture of their game than any company on earth, leading to a reasonable down-to-earth relationship with their community, but also a lot of double-edged, smug self-awareness. Here's how you kill someone in Valorant. You see someone, you slam the shift key, or you take that left hand off the keyboard, period. Aim for their head. Miss once, stop shooting and let the accuracy reset. Want to keep shooting? Hope you studied up on the recoil pattern, because here's your pop quiz. It took me 10 seconds to say those steps, and guess how many of you have to do them in. You do not know what you're getting yourself into if you touch this game. Every twisted soul here is a monster that knows these woods. I'll be a mile away only to get lights out by a submachine gun, or a dinked, as they call it. That happened every round on my first game playing. That's when the self-preservation instinct kicked in and I dreamed of happier places like Deathloop and Deltarune. Places where no matter what you go through, at the end of the day, it's still you. Instead, I'm here in this forest where every person is already aiming at me and I just don't know it yet. It's the only thing proving to me that this is good design, because if it has the power of the promise and can make people learn its rules, then it's gotta be doing something right for everyone but me. Outside of Spite, one of the few things Valorant has to keep me playing is its agents. If you've watched my Apex video, you'll know that I really like character shooters, but usually they're divided through words I can understand. Attack, tank, support. What the fuck is a controller? You got an ex-girlfriend back there? Controllers are universally set up based around their smoke screens and power to block lines of sight. They're also the only class I could get past playing, as a lot of them can do something while sitting behind a wall. Of course, it's also just as easy to place a smoke that sucks. I've been screamed at quite a lot for placing an innocent one at a gateway that stops my teammates from entering, but I prefer to think of it as wrapping my friends in bubble wrap for a bit. I'm just keeping you safe. Maybe I'm the ex-girlfriend here. Out of the four characters I actually play in Valorant, 50% of them are in the controller class. The first is Brimstone because he literally opens up a giant map and drops his smokes from there like the fucking coward he is, but he can also throw this stim beacon that makes your teammates fire faster. Which really doesn't help all that much since everyone's aiming for the head, but it always includes me in on the assists to make me feel special. I'm also just genetically predisposed to characters who are voiced by Steve Bloom. I like the enthusiasm. But no one grabbed the spike. The other controller that I like to play is Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite if she was an absolute bitch. Who to smother first? 
She throws a device that plants itself in the ground and begins to spray poison while draining from this meter. But the more noticeable of her abilities is this giant wall she can create. It can reach halfway across the map and functions the same way as the bomb. These walls are apparently a very delicate procedure though, because someone's always mad at me for how it's laid down. Sure, I don't have to engage them because I have groupthink on my side, meaning that if you're not in my Discord call, you're either an idiot or a fucker, but it still hurts my precious little feelings. I'm sure you know that feeling of being the bottom team member in a losing match. My advice is to put the Doggy Corgi channel on the second monitor, then mute the entire team. Then there's the Sentinel class, who can place traps and make adjustments to the field. My favorite is Cypher, who gets to lay down these tripwires and monitor the cameras from behind cover. I'm not sure if you've noticed the theme yet. Granted, the rules of the jungle dictate that if Cypher dies, all of his traps need to stop functioning because I deserve that, apparently. The popular Sentinel choice is Sage, as she places a giant ice wall that you need to shoot through, and her ultimate can res her teammates, just in case you wanted to know who got all of the annoying abilities. And she's free, because you deserve it, I guess. Then there's the Duelist class, to which I fucking play none of them. It's a self-protection thing. No one's gonna complain about a Sentinel being at the bottom, but if your whole kit lets you throw fireballs at people, they better be killing them. The final class is the Initiator. These characters are the opposites of the controllers. While their smokes can obscure sight lines, playing Initiator is about getting people to back the fuck off of those sight lines so that you could set up your beach blanket. They do this with flashbangs. Before you ask, yes, this game does get its personality from Counter-Strike Go, and no, I don't have any fucking clue why they swap their guns after shooting. Flashbangs blind people, letting you turn corners and strike down those on the other side. It even puts a big glowing light on their head so that you know where to fire. Unless they look the other way. I'm not sure if Riot Darwinism has taken effect on the larger nest, but I've seen pro players snap their necks to avoid these flashbangs, then blow out the phoenix who threw it. Breach is my favorite initiator because what do you think? He could make a massive shockwave that stuns people through walls, fire a charge that buries itself into the wall and blows up people on the other side, or can just make them blind if you like to be boring. Though being an initiator makes you a valuable part of the team. Without initiators, the only way onto a point is to try peeking. And if you know what peeking is, you'll know that it doesn't always work. Nor does the foolish choice I choose to believe in. It turns out you can't escape being bottom fragger by not choosing a duelist character. That still paints a target on your back. You will be the peasant in the match. Look at the jester, they'll say. Look how low to the ground thine crosshair is. Doth they even plug in their monitor? This game also has an economy. At the start of each round, you can open the market and pick from a large list of guns as long as you're interested in only three of them. During the first round, you get a meager 800 credits, resulting in what is often referred to as the pistol round. As most people tend to buy their abilities with that tiny allowance, and the guns that you can purchase aren't really all that great. I was told there was a lot of etiquette to follow in terms of what to buy, when to buy, and who to buy for, but unironically, fuck off. If we lose the first round and I can buy a vandal, it's mine. Unless we're losing, because then I'm throwing it off a cliff. That's because if you die, someone else can pinch it off your body. And if you want to know what happens when you keep buying stuff then dying, try to imagine the worst late-stage capitalism nightmare that you can. The operator is a sniper rifle that kills you in one shot and costs 4,800 credits. This would be Jeff Bezos' rocket into space if it landed inside my skull. Let the enemy get the operator and keep hoarding money so that they can always buy the operator, and welcome to actual hell. And guess whose fault that is. If you're resourceful like me, once the dust is settled and the competent players are fighting over the spike, you'll go grab a nice gun from someone who isn't using it. Then, use the money you saved from that to donate an operator to whoever's on the top of the team like taxes to a wealthy king. It does reek of League of Legends, though in spirit and community. Riot games create this magical storm where you either come out far left, far right, or far in jail. Or discussing hentai in public for some reason. Bro, that website's got the sauce, bro. On my mama. <laughs> Got the sauce on my mama, bro. <laughs> Everyone holds Riot Games' toxicity up to a legendary standard. Competitive style games have this special kind of environment where the stakes are so high and they drag on so long that you want something out of it. But that's exactly why the comp environment isn't toxic. No one's gonna risk the team morale dropping to bring attention to the fact that the Killjoy player is probably a girl. But there's no limit in unranked. You can be as vile and nasty as you'd like, and I'd much rather listen to cheap lo-fi than whatever the fuck the sage on my team has to say about my crosshair. The only thing that seems to calm them down is trading weapon skins. Some of these gun skins are $30. Valorant is free and it makes sense to do the cosmetic dance. How else are you gonna fund your anime? But it blows my mind as to how much these games will ask for a single gun skin. That's why people will ask you to pass it around and make you inspect it like a podcast of 13 year olds around their first porno mag. The weirdest thing about Valorant is that no matter what happens, I still play it. And not just because my friends play it. I know that for a fact because I'm the one that drags them onto it. 
I could always go back to the lands I've conquered, but by fuck, there's a part of me that wants to solve this miserable puzzle. I'm shocked you're the one who wants to play Valorant, they'll say smugly, gleaning at me from over their ESPN lineups. Jamie, pull up what happened last time. Granted, those friends do equally ruin Valorant as much as they boost it up. I don't have enough dancing dog videos to stomach finding my real rank, but the game labeled my ass with low MMR anyway, and these friends are pretty high up the food chain. So when the matchmaking spins out its numbers, it's going to consider my feeble fingers one-third the amount it considers the rest of the class, something something electoral college. I'm going to use the power of clarity voyance to read a comment from the future. Why is he bitching about a game he sucks at? Maybe he should just shut up. And I hope they realize the answer is that I like Valorant. It's got a lot of enjoyable tactics, and the fact that I'm terrible means that when I suddenly get a good kill, I taste the soul of royalty. Look, Valorant lets me play Counter-Strike and League of Legends without being cursed forever. Getting shot to pieces and everyone blaming me is bad, and that just means I have to improve at Valorant if I want to be anywhere that isn't peasant. Try to play it more on its terms and try to adjust myself by watching and reflecting on my plays. I gotta learn to grow. All right, let's give this a try. This is like fan fiction, but with sports, right? Aaron Rodgers said what?